How's it going? Welcome to the shop. We got a little bit of a different view today. Stay tuned and I'll tell you why. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. All right, so I got it on this side because we're going to work on the heat treat oven. I got the bigger one. Uh, this weekend, I, I got the new elements installed and did a lot of work. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen the whole process. And we got the little one. Now, this video is mainly just a tie-up video because the last one was wiring and all that stuff. But this video is mainly so when you go through the whole playlist of the other seven videos, some things that I fixed and some things that I figured out that are better and, and just an all-around video to tie it all up. I'm going to put this video first. Just so you guys can kind of, if you go to the playlist, you'll know what's going on and what to look for when I do the other stuff. If you watched the live stream yesterday, you know I got a new shirt. It's available and up on the website now. The website will either be up here or down in the description with the Amazon links and all that stuff, a few knives. Enough talking, let's get to the ovens. Alright, so we're going to do a test of the big oven and the little oven. The little oven will come almost at the end of the video, but I just want to show you the difference of how it's heating up and how fast it goes up. So now, I'm going to have to flip this door over. I took the door off because I'm going to have to flip it over. I'm going to have to put this part here, over here, and put the hinges over here. I'm going to have to buy new hinges because I welded the hell out of these things and they're not coming off. But anyway, I've made this piece, if you watched any of my videos, on heat treating before because my door has always been a problem. I've always had problems keeping the heat in and all that. So I put bigger elements in and I'm going to fix the door. So now, you know, what I, the door used to open up this way because I had my quench tank over here. But since I got two ovens now, I figured it'd be better to put the quench tank in the middle. I used to have them both up and down. But if you watch this test, Later on, when I fire up the small oven, it'll be a big difference on how fast it goes up. It's actually a big improvement on this oven, but the reason I built the smaller oven was because it took so long for this to get up to temp. It does seem to be going faster, though. So, let me show you. Something funny, though, on the small oven, if I take the door off, it still climbs up. But on this big oven, if we take the door off, it, it, it will start going down. See, look at that. So that's how big of an oven this is and how big it is and all that. But look at those elements, man. They are just cranking out. Whew. So I just wanted to do a test run. I got to be careful because those are, there's, not only are they hot heat-wise, but they are hot and they'll electrocute me. So I'll get burnt and electrocuted at the same time. <laughs> So now we're climbing back up. There's still little holes that need to be fixed in this and stuff, but we're pretty good. All right, back to the build. All right, so now we saw the oven fire up. I'm gonna put some clips in here of how I put it together. If you watch the part on the small oven where I drilled out the holes for the elements, I put everything together first. So here's a clip of how I just laid out these bricks and drilled them before I even put them together. So that clip will be here. Here's just a little interjection. If you watched the video for the small oven, I, I refractory cemented them all together, then laid them out. See, the best way to do it is lay them all out first. That way you can drill them out one by one and then refractory cement them all together. 
Just a little thing if you go back and watch that video. All right, there we go, boom. The sides are done on the big oven. I just did it on the drill press with the half inch bit. There we go. Now we just have to wait for everything to dry, then we can pull the elements and everything will be good to go. All right, next, I can't find my thermal paste or the screws that hold these together. I gotta hold it in with the ones I use for my pivots, 830 seconds. I might have to re-tap these to put it on. But when you put your solid state relay on the heat sink, it has to have thermal paste in between. I got some on order. This thing is just gonna be a whole bunch of clips pieced together. I got my uh, my soft 12 gauge wire. If you watched the wire video, the wire, the last video about wiring it, which I'll put up here and down in the description, this wire was too uh, brittle. It didn't have any flex. So I bought some 12 gauge flexible wire. And another thing is, if you watch that video, I had problems hooking up that switch. So I looked in my box and I had these. Like that. Put your wires in and it connects all three and you flip it down and it locks it in. So what I'll be doing is putting the wire to the PID, the wire to the element, and then a wire to the switch. Closing them all up and that's my connection. That way I don't have to worry about splicing them all together. But I'll show you that. This is a big amendment to that wiring thing. You're gonna need some kind of connectors. You can get connectors like that. This will work too. But you know, that's eight on them. You only need three wires. It's always good to have spare parts. Now, like I said, the thermal paste and the switches for the turn off the elements are coming tomorrow. So I'll have to put that clip in later. Let's get to the box and figure out how we get the box all sorted. So our box, first on the agenda, I unwired everything. So we're gonna have to figure out where we wanna place everything. See, this is why I got this. Cause when it's closed, See, we only had that small bit. So that's what I was saying in that wiring video. You're gonna want something deep. You probably only need something half this big, but it was hard to find something that deep. So I got one this big. The thing is, if you wanna, if you wanna wire the alarm lights and all that, you're gonna need a separate 12 volt power for the lights. And that goes on to uh, 12 and 13 or whatever you're, it, it usually says alarm one and two and negative and positive and stuff but you're gonna need a separate power source. And to be honest with you, on the other one where I got all the lights and bells and whistles, you don't really need it because it shows right here when these alarm one, alarm two. So these lights come on just like the elements and all that. So you don't need all the extra lights. Now I would put an extra switch to turn the elements on, but I'll show you how to wire that. It'll probably be a clip put in tomorrow because I have to wait for the switches. But anyway, I digress. So what we wanna do Let's figure out where our switches or where our PID is going to be. I like it right in the middle. Actually, I'll put a little bit off to the side. So we're going to draw our lines and there's the size of our PID. Now, you can do it however you want it. What I'll probably do is take my drill press or actually here, I'll just do it right here. So what I'm just going to do is drill a hole right on one corner. Once I get that off the thermocouple, drill it right in the corner. There we go. As the bit falls out. <laughs> now if you want, you can do all four corners or however you want to do it. Then you just gotta figure out what you want to use to cut it out. Looks like I'm gonna have to break out dad's old jigsaw. Let's see if we can get this working. This is probably older than most of the people watching here. <laughs> Good old black and decker. <laughs> here we go. I think that was melting it more than it was drilling it. <laughs> I work with metal all day and I'm getting my butt kicked by uh, plastic. <laughs> Alrighty. Come on baby, you know you want to go. There we go. 
Here's a double pull, double throw switch. Now going from the PID to the elements, you can use a single pull, single throw, but I highly suggest using double throw, double pull. That way you just put two, two wires to the relay and two wires to the negative and positive, and you can switch on and off your elements. And I'll show you how to do that later. <laughs> I'll have to put that clip, I keep saying this, I'll have to put that clip in, but so it's gonna be the same diameter because we're going to use the same switches I got them ordered I know I've got about 10 switches like this laying around and about two or three things the thermal paste from building computers but I can't find either of them now after they come tomorrow they'll all show up because <laughs> I, I love doing electronics so I should have switches everywhere just like I know I bought a whole box of those ring connectors and stuff like that from when I did my VFD I bought a whole box of them but I can't find those either those will turn up, same thing. What I do is I put my switch here for my elements and my switch down here to turn power on. And then we're gonna want two holes for our circuit breaker. I think they should all be, oh, stem diameter on this is 7 16 So let's get a 7 16 and we'll drill for this and see if it's too big or too small for this. Here's where I'm putting my circuit breaker over here. All right, so there's our circuit breaker installed. It's good to get all your components put where they where you want them. Nice tight fit. We can thread it on in. And now what we're going to want to do is drill a hole here for for our wires to come out. So here's our power in. So now that we know where our power is going to go. And our box is going to go, it's going to go right here, right next to the other box. We know all our runs, because we. if you watched the last video, I didn't know if I was going to put this little oven up on the big oven or where. But I just moved the big oven over, and now we have all the quench stuff in the middle of the two ovens. Wiring all this, it's just like I showed in that last video. The only thing different is, we're going to pull off one of our hots and put it to this. We'll take white, for instance. We'll take the white one and we'll run it to here. Then we'll run the other side of it to one pole. Then we'll take our black one and run it straight to the other side of the switch. And then the rest of the wiring is like in the last video. That part's all taken care of up to the switch. Let me get that done real quick. Remember, we don't need ground until we put metal on this chassis. So we're gonna have, uh, like I said, the white wire. So we're gonna have one wire go to here and one wire go to our switch. Now, I'm gonna hook this up today, but tomorrow when I get those uh, keylets in, I'm gonna solder those on. Well, uh, I guess we can use these. But what I wanna do is get out my soldering iron, and even though I clamp them down, I'm gonna put a just a bead of solder on them to make sure they don't pull out. See right here? See how that comes through? And you just put a little bead of solder right there, and it'll always come. But I'm gonna crimp it too for now. And then tomorrow I'm gonna break out when I get all my other keys and all that in, I'll break out the soldering iron, just put a dab on each one of them. So for these, you need slip joints, or what you can do is wrap the wire around and put a bead of solder on it. So either way, uh, but I have the slip joints coming, so I'm not using the slip joints. Now, the solid state relay stays outside of your box. I mean, I guess you could put it in the box if you wanted to, but I keep it outside. So tomorrow I'll come and I'll put a bead of solder right there. I mean, it's pretty sturdy, but I don't want to take any chances. So now, this black wire, I'm gonna have the slip joints, but for now, I'm just going to hook it up and we'll get this up and running. Now we take a piece that we cut off. Since we're using black, we might as well go with the black one. Make sure you have plenty of room. So I'm going to put one of these on one side and the slip joint on the other. Yeah, see? See how that comes up through? 
If you have a soldering iron, just put a dab of solder, make sure it touches there. You know, the clamping should work good, but if you watch that last video I did, these things just kept coming undone and stuff like that, so might as well have double the security. See how, see how easy that just came out? And that's 220, you know, you burn down your house if something like that happens. Tomorrow after I get everything put on, I'm just going to break out the soldering iron, put a dab of soldering on everything, and, and you know, have it double secure. Like I say, these will have slip joints on them. But that's it. The black comes in, goes through your circuit breaker, over the one side of the switch. The white comes in and goes straight to your switch. Now here's where we are having problems in the last video. Here's our wire. It goes to the PID, to the power of the PID. Take one of these, open it up. Slide in one wire for the PID. Lock it closed, pull on it. Good to go. I use a white wire. So we got a white wire here. This white wire is gonna to go to the switch. So we got a wire going to the switch, a wire going to the PID. And let me drill another hole in here. The element goes in one, lock it down. So, PID, element, switch. So, put the element through the hole, <laughs> into the middle one or whichever one, it doesn't matter. They're all connected now. So we got our PID, our element, and our switch. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter which side these go on. Player doesn't matter with 220. If you're doing 120, you got to check for your, your uh, neutral and your hot. Black is usually hot and white is usually neutral. But with 220, it doesn't matter. Switch. PID element. There's one side of the switch. 220 in. One side to one side. Now, I need one for my relay. I'm going to actually have my relay basically right next to my oven, but we can cut that later. Actually, that's probably perfect length. I thought they gave me 10 feet of each. I guess they gave me 5 foot. <laughs> it said 10 foot of wire each color, but I guess it meant 10 foot all together. So 5 foot should be fine. This goes right from the switch to the solid state relay. So we need another one of these connectors. I forgot all about these connectors, man. These things are a godsend. One for the PID, one for the solid state relay. Y'all wanna give them a tug, make sure they don't connect. Now we'll cut a black one, strip both sides. One goes to the solid state relay. Give it a tug, oh, that one didn't go in far enough. That's why you always have to give it a tug. If they don't go in far enough, then uh, there we go. Yeah, always give your wires a tug. It's better that you pull them out than they come out because uh, something bad happens. Because then something bad will happen. <laughs> so that's why I always give these a tug. Like, you can see how many I've actually wasted. Of these I've actually wasted. There's probably like 10 of them where I crimped them and pulled it and it came right out. It's rather, you know, you don't want that. You want to make sure your wiring is secure. Until we get metal. See, now, once you hook metal up, like I have it on my other oven, you're going to run this ground straight to the chassis of your oven. But I don't have any metal on this oven yet. So we're just going to keep it sitting right here. In fact, just to make sure, I'm going to tape up the end because we don't want anything hitting or shorting out or... or accidental connections or anything like that so when we get metal on this we'll connect it so the rest is just like in the wiring you know we got our solid state relay here here's to the PID you know doesn't matter this is power to the PID see so 220 is 120 and 120 there's no positive and negative so white is 120 black is 120 the black comes in, goes through your circuit breaker, goes to the switch. Your white goes straight to the switch. Your black comes off the switch, goes to the relay, and also goes to the PID. This is where it was kind of confusing in that last video. 
So we got one to the PID, one to the relay that goes to the switch. The other side of the PID goes right to the element, goes right to the switch. And that's your wiring. And then you hook up your PID like in the other video. And then you hook up, you know, the relay out. All that stuff is the exact same as in the other wiring. I just wanted to show this as a better solution. You don't have to worry about wire slipping out. And tomorrow I'll come in when I hook these up, you know, put solder on each one of these little joints to make sure they stick. So that's about it for this. Uh, and then I'll put the switch in here too for the elements and I'll show you that. But let's get this thing fired up. I got everything wired. I got the solid state relay sitting right here. So it's just a test run. I got it plugged in. We're kicking it on. You know, like I say, tomorrow I'll have the switch here. Let's kick it on. Boom. I've got it set for $9.99. It's already at $3.45. You can see I turned it on to check the thermocouple. Watch how fast this thing kicks up. This thing is so much faster than the other oven. It's like skipping numbers. It starts skipping numbers once it gets going. See, it, it starts, once, once the uh, heating elements start heating up, it just starts booking, starts skipping like five, six numbers. And watch this. I'm going to take the, the door off so it's wide open. I had the door off on the other one, remember? It went down in temperature instead of going up. Look at that. It's climbing real fast. Even with the door open, it hits a thousand degrees in like five minutes. But, whoo, man, I'm cooking. <laughs> oh, man. I might just keep this like that with these in front of it. Now, can you see that solid state relay? The light right here is on. Now, when I put that switch, basically, it's going to be like this, like turning this switch off, it's going to, and, and the light, that's all it's going to do. You'll see the lights go to the element. We're putting another switch like this one that goes right to the elements. It's going to come right between these two cords right here. You know, it's going to be closer there, but we're just going to pull the SSD, these two wires. I'll cut, when I get the switches, I'll show you that because I have to do the thermal compound too. But that's it for now. Tomorrow I'll finish this up. I'm going to go edit this video. So tomorrow all I'll have to do is put in the clips that are missing. But man, I've got clips here, there. For, i got a whole bunch of stuff to put together, so should be a whole lot of editing. But two ovens, both up and running. One needs a door, one needs thermal paste and a switch. But boom, man, good to have these things up and running. Yeah, man. See you tomorrow. Well, see you in a second. <laughs> Take it easy. All right, so the Amazon stuff didn't show up today, but I'm going to show you exactly what goes on with the switch for the element. So this is all the switch does. Basically, you're coming out of your solid state relay, you're hooking through the switch, and then you're going from the switch into the PID. So that means when you turn off this switch, now you know your elements are off. Which means you can program this and all that stuff and not worry about your elements, you know, any problems. Or, or you can turn this off and open your oven and not worry about getting shocked. But that's how that goes. So sorry that Amazon didn't deliver. Uh, I was going to wait another day and put this out, but... Who knows, they might not even show up today, so that would be another wasted day. All you gotta do when you get your thermal compound, the thermal compound comes when you buy the solid state relay in the heat sink. The thermal compound comes with it. But of course, the screws and the thermal compound, I'm like, oh, I'll lose these if I don't put them somewhere. And now I can't remember where I put them. But like everything else, once I get it all in, everything will show up. Just remember, you don't have to put a whole bunch of thermal paste. Just when you, you take your heat sink, you put a couple drops, like a couple rice sized pieces, and then you put your solid state thing on and, and screw it down. So one thing I said in the video, which I corrected too, I said double pull, double throw. It's double pull, single throw. That means it's double pull, but only throws one way, you know, on and off. So double pull, single throw, which means you come off your solid state relay with your positive and negative. Now this is the one place positive and negative really matter. 
So you come off your solid state relay, positive and negative, hook it to the switch, then you take your other two wires, positive and negative, and run them to the PID, just like in the wiring video before. I'm sorry I can't show it, but it's actually really easy. And you do it just like all the other steps. And a lot of people, instead of a switch, they'll use a normally closed relay on the door. And that way, when you open the door, the switch opens, breaks the contact, and the elements go off. I just prefer to have it manual. If I want to turn the elements on and turn them off, I turn them on and off. But you can use a relay switch on the door, too. I know even heat and all them, that's how they do it. But either way, you're just taking off your solid state relay, running it through the switch, and then running it into the PID. So, sorry I couldn't show that. I waited a whole day for Amazon to show up while I did other stuff. That's about it. I got the new shirts available on my website. There's a couple of knives on there. In fact, I want to get this heat treat oven behind me and get back to knife making so I can get a few more knives up on the website. The link is in the description, and I usually put it in the comments, and it's also on the cards up above. So thanks for everything. Hope you're all having a great day. Really appreciate the support. Like it if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. Leave a comment. Let me know if you have any ideas, any questions, anything you need help with, with knife making or any of that stuff. Thanks for the support. And as always, take it easy. You just have your positive and negative that come off the solid state relay. You have your positive and negative that come off the solid. You have your positive and negative that come off the solid state relay. You take the positive and negative. You hook it to the. Uh, that's.